ducks. Yes, ducks in outer space from the Disney. A few months ago, I came to my fellow bronies with a necessary message, that the blow-up over Alicorn Twilight had gotten out of control and went against everything that our fandom should represent. That video got a positive reaction, and while some folks hoped I'd do more, I thought that was going to be my last pony-related video for a while. After all, Season 4 isn't arriving until December, and I kind of figured that once Alicorn Twilight blew over, we'd be a fandom free of controversy and infighting. Well, that prediction went about as well as me picking the Packers to beat San Francisco in the playoffs. The good news is that the Alicorn controversy pretty much died. No one's still talking about it. The bad news is that's probably only true because the fandom has found a new lightning rod to be the source of immeasurable consternation, petty disagreements, and talk of the end times for the fandom. So, yeah, let's talk about Equestria Girls. For the uninitiated, here's the condensed version of the story. Last winter, Hasbro announced a new pony-related IP called Equestria Girls. The hook was that this was going to put our beloved characters in a high school setting and also turn them into humans and good god someone get those girls some sandwiches or something. There was some early backlash but it was pretty muted because we were all busy with something else at the time. We were also kind of confused because solid information on this project was hard to come by. This was initially rumored to be a full spin-off series but in the spring we learned it's actually going to be a feature-length film that will have single weekend showings in nearly 300 US theaters this summer with a fall TV premiere. Will there be a series? Will they do more with this if the film succeeds or just can the whole thing if it flops? Who knows? We didn't even know for sure that the normal voice cast would be involved until the trailer came out, which is also when this re-emerged as a fandom-splitting controversy. A sizable portion of the brony community is determined to condemn this project sight unseen. Did we learn nothing five months ago? Now, I'm not saying that the haters are wrong about Equestria Girls. Quite the contrary, I'm actually with them on a lot of this. But again, the problem is how irrational the negativity has gotten, especially with the movie still over a week away from its theatrical premiere. So why is this thing so controversial? The complaints can be grouped into two broader issues, the concept and the marketing. The conceptual issue is pretty simple. A lot of people have a problem with the high school setting and the humanization of the ponies. The high school setting isn't a big deal to me. I suspect a lot of people are overreacting to that because they hear high school and immediately think of a certain other recent high-profile franchise that was set in high school and was also horrible. But regardless, it doesn't really gel with the show's slice-of-life approach to storytelling. On the other hand, humanizing the ponies is a completely different, mysterious, and downright baffling can of worms. Okay, not really mysterious. It's pretty clear that Hasbro is doing this so that they have an excuse to make a new line of toys to rival Monster High. That's the beginning and end of the reason why this is taking the form it's in. And yeah, I'm with the skeptics here. Turning ponies into humans doesn't sound like an organic extension of friendship is magic. It sounds like the premise of a really bad fanfic. It'd be like making a Sherlock Holmes story where Holmes is a high school student. And also a pony. Sherlock here is a versatile character, but at some point there's a line you cross where it just loses its legitimacy as a Sherlock Holmes story. Take the pony out of My Little Pony, and all you have left is nonsensical gibberish. There have been other issues too, related to how Hasbro has marketed the movie. Take the synopsis, for example, which says, When a crown is stolen from the Crystal Empire, Twilight Sparkle pursues the thief into an alternate world where she transforms into a teenage girl who must survive her biggest challenge yet. High school. With the help of- Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What? I couldn't have read that correctly. Twilight Sparkle has faced the leader of a changeling army, a near-omnipotent god of chaos, the tyrannical former ruler of the Crystal Empire, and the goddess of the night, and they're telling me that high school is supposed to seem like a daunting challenge by comparison? Cue the eye rolling. Anyway, with the help of her new friends, who remind her of Ponyville's Applejack, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and Fluttershy, she embarks on a quest to find the crown and change the destiny of these two parallel worlds. So, the main characters seen in these promo images aren't actually the main characters, but uncanny lookalikes. That has to be the biggest friggin' coincidence I've ever heard. 
And the rest of the synopsis also raises some questions. Like, what's so important about this crown? Why does she need to enroll in a school to get it back? How would she do that without breaking several laws? And if this crown is so important, why aren't her friends going with her? Not helping matters is that the trailer vaguely alludes to the possibility that the entire thing's going to climax with a prom queen style beauty contest, which, yeah, would be more than a little lame. But here's the thing, guys. Out of all those issues and problems that I've just described, none of them are deal breakers. Not even close. Why? First, and most importantly, there is not a shred of evidence that Equestria Girls will have any effect at all on Season 4 of Friendship is Magic. If you want to ignore it, there's nothing stopping you. Any claims that this will ruin the brand or the show are, once again, simply factually inaccurate. But even more to the point, none of those issues even necessarily means that Equestria Girls will be a bad movie. Are they causes for concern? Certainly. But a questionable premise and a blatantly commercial origin aren't the nail in the coffin. Good things have been salvaged from situations like this. Two summers ago, we saw the release of a major franchise movie with a disillusioned fan base and an extremely rushed production. The marketing featured some off-putting still images, and what little plot was hinted at in the trailers just made it look like a lame rehash of ground that had already been covered in previous movies. You know what movie I'm talking about? Ready for the big reveal? That movie was X-Men First Class. And it rocked. Heck, why am I even talking about a non-pony example? How about the royal wedding? Two new characters, one of them a pink alicorn princess, show up completely out of the blue for a wedding episode? Come on, that was all about toy sales. And the plot of the evil Queen Chrysalis is extremely convoluted and doesn't hold up to the slightest bit of scrutiny. But you know what? None of that matters. It doesn't matter because Pinkie Pie brings out the party cannon. It doesn't matter because Twilight Sparkle turns into Sasha. It doesn't matter because the prim and proper rarity who loathes the very idea of doing anything that might make her seem less ladylike straight up cold cocks a dude. These episodes were friggin' metal. My Little Pony turned into the third act of the Avengers, and I'm supposed to believe that this is completely beyond saving? Lots of fans hated the Equestria Girls trailer, but even a bad trailer in the grand scheme of things doesn't count for much. Bad movies routinely get fantastic looking trailers. Adventure Time has some of the most obnoxious ads on television, and everyone who watches it tells me it's doing just fine. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't be skeptical about this movie. I'm skeptical about how this is going to turn out, and I'm sure some of the more negative bronies will never be convinced to give this movie a shot no matter what I say. But ask yourself, is this movie worth arguing about? Is it worth the pages of scathingly negative posts on Equestria Daily and MLP forums that were going up daily when the trailer came out? Should something that brought us all together and brought us all so much joy turn us against each other? Does anything about Equestria Girls justify sending angry messages to the creator? creative team who are hard at work trying to make something good? I submit to all of you that the answers are no, 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 and hell no. But I have a feeling that a few months from now, none of this will matter. The movie will come out, the controversy will pass, and the fandom will survive and overcome our difficulties like always. Like Alicorn Twilight, Equestria Girls will become a non-issue, and the sooner the better. As for the movie itself, I'll probably be seeing it in early July, and when I do, I'll be doing my damnedest to evaluate it outside of the storm of negativity it has existed in since its initial announcement. This movie deserves, at the very least, an opportunity to make its case and be judged on its own merits. Many of us, myself included, were reluctant for a long time to give Friendship is Magic that chance. That's a mistake that doesn't need to be made twice. I'm Cory Bend, and that was the monologue. Houston, we have a problem. Our shuttle captain's a raving waterfowl. Oh my god, he is a crazy jock in space. Dude, your nephews miss you. Please go back.